What's up, YouTubers and Joe fans? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the 2005 Direct-to-Consumer Rolling Operation Command Center, or ROC for short. This amazing vehicle boasts a movable robotic arm with a grabber claw. It has a hidden launch with eight firing missiles. Also, fold-down driver's windscreen. The cab actually separates from the trailer. If you open the trailer, it reveals a command center with fold-down ramps. It also has a jet with an opening canopy. The jet actually attaches to the launch platform, a movable gun turret, an escape tube, and a sliding elevator. Now this vehicle came with Long Range Version 2. Now Long Range Version 1 came with a thunderclap. And there's a thing to note, they are two absolutely different figures because their file names are different. Also to note, there was a Sigma 6 version of the ROCC. And they are the same exact vehicle in the package, except the Sigma-6 actually came with a two-inch figure of long range. Taking a look at this vehicle from afar, you can see all the absolutely wonderful molded in detail. The already factory applied decals all over this thing. There is no shortage of detail on any of these surfaces of the vehicle. Taking a closer look at long range version two, you can see this is a really fantastic sculpt for the time period. The light tan skin tone brings out his Mexican background. If you look at the side here, you can actually see his ponytail. It's a really fantastic touch to make him different from his comrades. Now he is a O-ring design build. He does have an O-ring and all the same articulation as your O-ring figures. He's sporting a green quilted vest with a gray t-shirt and silver dog tags. He also has dual pistols, which unfortunately are not removable. Gray camo pants, dark gray boots. Now the sculpt does carry around to the back and as you can see, there's the screw hole to change the O-ring if you need to. Now this belt is removable. It just pegs into the figure like this. You just unport both front and rear and you can actually remove the belt. I actually uh, prefer to leave this on the figure so I don't lose it. And it just pegs back in nice and easily. So yeah, this is a fantastic looking figure for 2005. And I really like how they brought some more diversity to the G.I. Joe line. Let's take a look at the star of the show. Now this is a really massive vehicle. As you can see, it takes up pretty much my entire turntable. And I think the best way to review this is actually take this thing apart, review the cab first, and then the trailer second. Now, let's take a look at the actual towing feature. This actually pulls apart in this fashion, and you can actually have an articulation point here when you're rolling this thing around. Or, you keep it in like this, and this keeps it nice and stationary without the pivot point. But, for right now, I think we're gonna take this apart and look at the cab first. Now we can take a nice close look at the actual cab. And as I spin this around, you can see the hidden missile system right there on the rear. All the molded in detail all the way around. The big chunky hard plastic tires. The G.I. Joe logo. And the triple windows on the actual windshield itself. Okay, let's go over some of the play features of the actual cab itself. Now, right here on top is the actual hidden missile system, which is generally hidden by the trailer. Now, this thing is articulated. It does pop up. Like this, and then it swings up one more time. Then you click it up, it is ratcheted, and it also pivots around. The nice ratcheting system on all the moving joints. And here, of course, you can see all eight of those white missiles. We spin it around to the side to launch a mechanism. You press each one of these buttons, and I'll show you how this works. If you press the button once, it launches the first missile. And if you press it again, it launches the second missile. Now that's the same for all four of these buttons on top. I will say these things are pretty powerful and they do go pretty far. Let's get this facing the rear right now. And Now you'll notice on my display stand I use some of these anti-slip pads because this thing rolls really great and I just don't want this thing to roll off my turntable here. Now let's take a look at the triple menacing windshields right here. That's all armored up. Underneath here is a brush bar. There's painted on lights everywhere and painted on grill. 
we spin it around to the side, you can actually see the exhaust pipe in the back. There's a molded in figure stand right here with a foothold peg and two more standing ports on the rear. As we turn it to the side, you can see the factory applied GI Joe label right here on the door. It also has another figure stand right here with a foothold peg. Now, let's take a look at the inside of the cab. And as you can see, that just flips forward in that fashion. Look at all the amazing molded in detail in here. There's three seats on the front, a rear facing seat here, and if I can tip it just right, there's one more seat right here behind the driver. You can see the molding detail on the seats on the floor. The actual steering wheel, the steering stick is articulated. It goes up and down and moves out of the way so you can get a figure in nice and easy. So there's plenty of seating for figures inside the cab itself. Let's grab Long Range. Now, of course, he does fit in here, no problem at all. Let's get him into the driver's seat here. And we'll shift this around and lock him in place. So that's what it looks like with Long Range in the driver's seat. Now, it wouldn't be a Woodman review if we didn't try a modern figure in one of these vintage vehicles. Let's get this out of the way and move Long Range out of the way. Now, I just so happen to have a Slaughter's Marauders Falcon figure right here on my bench, so we'll give him a go. Slide this back and lock him in place. And as you can see, he fits in here absolutely perfectly. No issue at all. So this cab will absolutely accommodate your modern 4-inch figures. And the cab does close up nice and tight. And you can see him right there through the driver's window, taking command of the actual cab. Now, let's take a really quick peek at the under chassis of the actual cab. Close this down. And as you can see, they did actually add some molding on the bottom of the actual vehicle. All in all, a really amazing vehicle for the direct-to-consumer or DTC line. There's foot pegs everywhere so you can fit your figures all over this thing. It does include a, of course, the figure stand right here for your vintage figures. Now, the entire vehicle actually houses three in the rear and five in the cab. So that's eight figures just in this portion of the command center. Now there's one more feature that's on this vehicle. There's portholes everywhere. See the small one there? And now these things are for the other DTC vehicles in this line, whether it's the Night Ops Humvee or the Rhino. You can actually remove the weapons off of those vehicles and port them into this entire vehicle. So all of the vehicles in this line are interchangeable and I think that's a really amazing touch. Okay, onto the trailer or the actual command center of the vehicle. When you disconnect it, you can see that this is actually wobbly and it's not stable. Underneath right here, you actually flip out these two stabilizing arms in this fashion. And now it actually rests level on any surface. And it's nice and stable. Now while we have this side facing the camera, let's just take a look at some of the molded in detail all over this panel. You can see some molded in storage detail underneath here. Up here is another one of those attachment points for those modular weapons from the other vehicles on the line. If we come around to the front, here's one of the play features up top. This is the actual radar dish and it is articulated. It does go up and down and the dish does flip back and forth. Also included is an antenna. Now this antenna is removable. Just take that off. But of course, I like to leave it on because antennas are very easily lost. They actually even molded in a couple of vents right here, even though that's generally hidden by the cab. Now let's get to this side and take a look at all the detail on over here. Here's another port for those weapons. So more molded in detail on the bottom, right here in the midsection, and of course the factory applied labels. Now you'll notice there's a hole here and a turret over here. Now as I tip it up, you can actually see the slide rail or slot right here on top. And this actually flips up, slides over, and drops down into the other hole. Now before we do that, let's actually take a look at the turret right here in the back. It actually opens up. It does have a pivoting articulated gun that goes up and down. If I can't get a shot inside so you can see. Figure does actually sit and or stand in there. 
let's grab long range again and see how he looks inside here he can stand up in there with no problem at all he can be man of the gun in this fashion now in order to get this hatch to close we actually have to take him out and bend his legs a little bit kind of in a sitting position like this and now he'll uh, go in there no problem at all all right, let's try Lieutenant Falcon next. Get him out of the way. And as you can see, he's much taller. Let's see if we can't get him to sit in here. Uh, wiggle him around a little bit. That's about the best we're gonna do. Oh, this hat just fell off and, well, unfortunately, his upper torso is a little too tall, so you cannot close the turret. But of course, he can stand up in here and. He looks fantastic in the standing position. All right, let's get this gold-plated goof off out of the way. Close up the canopy. Now, one of the fun play features of this is this actually pulls out like this. Now, the actual turn itself is articulated. It does go left and right. And well, You know what? Let me put this back in the hole and show you that. I uh, should have showed you that. A minute ago but it does rotate all the way around so this lifts up it slides over it pivots around now the thing you got to notice you got to pivot it from the bottom right here and as it's nice and ratcheted and then it just drops into this slot now in this position it can actually protect the front of the actual vehicle it does rotate of course it does hit the radar dish on that side but it does pivot all the way around in this direction and of course, this adds one more fun play feature to the vehicle itself. Now, this isn't called a rolling operation command center for nothing. Let's go ahead and open it up and check out the inside. You have to first open this panel on this side. Let's rotate it around here. The entire upper body lifts up. And now it exposes the actual command center hidden inside the trailer. And as I pan the camera up, here you can actually see the hidden stealth jet inside the actual command center, which we'll take a look at momentarily. Now it does have two deployable ramps, one on this side, and there's one on the other side, so we'll spin this around. And this just drops down like this. So now if you have a small vehicle, it can roll up on there and get some repairs and roll out the other side. Some of the other features inside are this articulated crane right here. It does go up and down. It does have a small ratcheting system on it. It does rotate right and left and that ratchets into place. It has a spring-loaded claw on the end. Get my hand out of the way here, and you can see it's spring loaded. Nice, great looking detail right here on the front platform with some diamond plating and some yellow hoses with stairs leading up to there. So, when you roll a vehicle up inside the repair bay, it come up the ramp and just park it right there. Now, I raise the camera up a little bit so we can take a look at the command center itself. Right off the bat, you can actually see it has four chairs. One there, 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 and there. These do have a little bit of articulation. They do go back and forth. The center command chair does rotate 360 degrees. This one does rotate back and forth a little bit, as well as the one facing the rear of the vehicle. Here you can see all the other amazing details all over the floor with the diamond plating on the bottom, the painted yellow hoses all over the deck here. And also, let me tip this up so you can take a look at the computer screens. Now, even though the actual command center isn't too large, it is large enough to have a meeting place with your Joes. And of course, you can put your vintage Joes in here and grab Falcon again. Get him to sit over here in this chair. He's sitting here at the ready. So it will absolutely accommodate your four inch larger modern Joes as well. Tons of playability with this vehicle. And uh, pivot it around a little bit. I'm gonna grab the camera 
see if we can't get a top-down view a little bit so you can get more eyes on all the amazing stuff that's going on inside here. Some details on top of the actual pivoting chairs and textures everywhere. All right, let's take a look at the actual jet that comes with the vehicle and get these guys out of the way. Take my camera, see if I can't pivot this up without shaking it too much. And now you can actually see that mini black stealth jet hidden inside the trailer. Absolutely amazing looking mini jet. Pivot this around. You can see how it's just resting there on the launch port. These stickers were applied already by the factory. And this actually opens up so you have multiple levels. And there's a level on top up here. This is actually stationary on that side that doesn't open. Right here is an actual working elevator that does go up and down on this rail system. It does have a peg port right there for the figure stand. It's got a waistband to hold the figure in place. This is the turret that was on top of the trailer. The jet here actually launches right off this command center. If you pull this up like this, if I can pull this apart, I'll show you the underside. There's a hole in the center right there that actually corresponds to that peg that goes up and down on that rail system. And now's a great time to take a look at all the detail of the jet. All right, included with the ROCC is this mini stealth jet. Absolutely amazing detail on this little plane. You see all the molded in details all over this thing. The sharp angles. The factory applied labels all over the place. If I flip it on the underside. You can see the additional holes here for those weapons from the other DTC vehicles if you want to add them on here. Look at the rear thruster. Now this thing is articulated. This does go up and down for vertical takeoff, I guess. Eh, use your imagination, right? Now it does have some molded in weapons on both the wings. Now if we take a look at the canopy here, get this thing to pop open. Here you can see the great looking detail in here with the golden stick shift right there on the left side, molded in seat. And of course, let's grab long range, get him in there, because we know the vintage figures will fit in there no problem at all. But let's see if we can't fit that modern figure in here as well. Get him out of the way. Grab good old Falcon. Slide him in. And you do gotta push him down a little bit. Oh, look at that, he fits in there great. Let's close the canopy, shake it. He's not rattling around or moving around at all. So this thing will accommodate your modern four inch figures just like the rest of the rolling command center. What a great addition to the actual vehicle. I think this is my favorite play feature. There's one more play feature back here now that the jet's actually off the launch pad. This is actually a hidden slide or escape tube. So if there's a figure up top, he put his arms down by his side, drop him down, and as you can see, he comes right out of the bottom. So really great exit from the top to the bottom, and one more fun play feature of the actual vehicle. Now, of course, we know what this thing looks like with vintage figures, but I went ahead and grabbed some of my modern figures and laid them out here in the command center. Here you can see General Hawk on the platform back there giving orders, breaker on the computer system, and clutch working on a ram cycle. That ram cycle fits in there really well. As I pan around to the front, I added a couple of modern figures into the cab here, and there's Beachhead in the passenger seat, and of course Gung Ho's a really large figure. He fits in that driver's seat with zero issues. Now having one more rolling operation command center in my fleet is fine by me. 
This thing is absolutely amazing. And let's take a look at it from this angle. a better look at just how that ramp cycle fits on that repair bay. Okay, this is going to wrap up my review of the Direct to Consumer or DTC ROCC or Rolling Operation Command Center. Is this something you'd like to add to your collection? If so, let me know in the comments below. And as always, I'd like to thank you for watching. And if you like what you see, join the community. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button for future notification of upcoming videos. And most importantly, always help a fellow collector out and share your knowledge. Yo, Joe! Yo, Joe!